Welcome back to the shop. It's so good to have you here. Today, we're talking about my forge. What's going on with it? Some pros, some cons, some things that I would do again, I wouldn't do again, and doing some repair work. Here we go. So I'm definitely not the kind of guy that gets on board with, this is how you make a gas forge. I do use a gas forge, it's propane. I feel like the best thing if you're looking at building a forge is just gather as much information as you can about them and then decide which way makes sense for you. It's a forced air uh, forge, so that means it has a fan and then you just dump basically propane into it. It's about, uh, probably about 14, hang on and check, hang on. So the forge is about uh, 14 inches in length. Wasn't I supposed to throw this away? I still have it. And the doors uh, on the ends, they both go up and down so you can stick your pieces of material in. One thing that I was really determined when I built my forge is that I wanted it to get really hot and I didn't want to have a hot spot in it. I don't like that. So that is why on my forge for the design that the blower comes in on the side and it swirls around, it's starting to rain. This roof has no insulation in it and it's super loud when it rains. Hopefully this will work out. Burner coming in on the side. The negative is it's super loud. This thing's like a turbine engine when you turn it on. Oh, what's that? Oh, that's Tim, he's just running his forge and then chooka, 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 bang, bang, bang. Oh, that's his power armor going. Everybody knows I'm at work. I don't like the loud forge, and so that's a negative on going with the, the burner coming in the side. I figured it out, roughly, that the forge, if you have it pinned going full tilt, running it hard, you'll be going through about 25 gallons of propane a day. I don't always run it that hard. That's not uh, full tilt all the time though, so it's better than that, but it can be a little bit costly. I can start to freeze up my 250 gallon tank outside if I run it hard. So for the door system, I didn't design it, I just copied it. It's got uh, two cables on pulleys that goes to a weight, so essentially, it's, so essentially it's balanced so that you just pull the weight down and the door opens. This forge is the middle of the road for me on size. Some days it's too big and some days it's too small. I just take a middle road because I only have one forge. The power hammers can some days eat a lot of steel and so then it would be better to have a bigger one. But if you don't, if you don't need it, you don't want to be burning the propane, right? It's super expensive. So that, that's how I just go for it. I just go for the middle road. It's, it seems to work out okay. I went with castable refractory. It's a hard castable. It's basically, if you're not familiar with it, it's basically like a type of cement, but for high temperature. So you would just, you pour it, you form it the same way you would think about pouring cement. I have bricks around the side and that's just for landing your pieces of steel and then pushing them in. Those are broken and falling apart too. So what I was hoping today was to, I have um, refractory that's for repair work. I was hoping to do the doors and show you that um, just because I'm so pushed right now with work at the shop here. Um, I'm just gonna have to run with the way the doors are. I'll quickly put some bricks down just to get that table back up so my pieces of steel aren't falling out all the time. So that's maybe a little bit downer to not having the time to show you that because that would be fun, I guess, in the future maybe. So if I was gonna build this forge again, what would I do differently? I don't know that I would go with the burner coming in the side. I would wanna think about that a little bit because it's so loud, I don't like that. I would do the door system a little bit differently the other thing that I would do is I would put a bigger shelf all the way around this forge so that I can drop steel on it and just have more surface to pick up and go. Might even start to put uh, bricks and then steel just so it's stronger, the bricks start to break or better support the bricks or cast it, that could be an option too. Um, I think that's sort of what I, I would probably go with the same size again if I had to and uh, make another bigger one, and then another bigger one after that, and then another smaller one, and you know, just have a whole bunch of forges on hand. No, we can't all do that. It's the middle of the road for me. So a sort of a different video format today, a little bit quick, just hopefully a little bit of information that uh, you can get into your brain so you can start thinking about how you wanna do your forge, some pros and cons. Again, 
I don't think there's any one forge for one particular person, like this is what you need to do. You just figure out what works best for you and then go for that route, whether that's building or buying, forced air, venturi, this door system, that door system, et cetera. So just throw in a whole bunch of information, what I've got here, and then you can make your decision. Anyways, I hope you liked this video. If you, if you did, please hit the like button. If you haven't already, it's a little steppy, isn't it, Tim? <laughs> if you haven't already. I would love it if you would subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Let's just get through that. <laughs> and uh, I look forward to seeing you next time. Have a great day. Evening, afternoon, always do this. Just, just have a great, I just hope you're doing really great. We'll see you next time.